Hola vaqueros, bienvenidos al Somos Suficientes, the show where we discuss topics related to la cultura hispana and play musica en español. I'm your host, DJ Almex, and I've got some great content lined up for you today. Before we begin, here are a few songs that'll make you proud to be Latinx. Enjoy. Welcome back, vaqueros. Once again, I'm DJ Almex, host of the show Somos Suficientes. Primero, I just wanted to start by saying thank you y gracias for tuning in. Uh, this is my first time hosting a radio show, and I am beyond excited and a little nervous to share this journey with you all. Hispanic culture is uh, something that has always been near and dear to my heart, and I am extremely blessed to be here discussing topics that I hope you'll find relatable, or if not relatable, then at least interesting. I'd also like to say Happy Hispanic Heritage Month to all my Hispanic listeners out there. I know it's kind of towards the end of the month. However, I still wanted to dedicate today's show to you guys as you are all the reason I'm starting this show. In today's segment, there are two main topics I'd like to discuss. First, I'd like to talk about the meaning and purpose behind Somos Suficientes. And then after that, I'd like to talk about some Hispanic icons who I think enabled the ideas behind this show. Now, in order to begin, I'd like to start by sharing a bit of my own backstory. And just a disclaimer, like I promise, it ties into the grand scheme of the show and I'm not just rambling on about my life. Uh, that being said, here's a little bit about me. So in 2002, my birth mother traveled from Tabasco, Mexico to the United States to give me up for adoption. Uh, because of her financial situation, she knew that she could not provide me with the life she felt I deserved. Um, I was born in Brownsville, Texas, and immediately after my birth, I was adopted by a loving couple from Charleston, South Carolina. Despite me being Mexican and them being white, my parents took me in and raised me as if they gave birth to me themselves. While living in the Southeast, however, I was oblivious to cultures other than my family's. Charleston's population is 90% black and white, so it never occurred to me that I should learn about my Hispanic heritage. You know, when you're a child, you don't think about things like culture and origins and language. You just want to fit in with your peers. So I acted like every other white child growing up in South Carolina. I ate boiled peanuts on the dock of my Aunt's Creek house. I watched The Wheel of Fortune and listened to my dad's classic rock records. It also didn't help that I was the only Hispanic child in my elementary and middle school either. I know that's weird. Honestly, as far as I was concerned, I was white too. Though in 2015, so about when I was 13 years old, I traveled to McAllen, Texas for the first time to visit some family. My mom's white brother married a strong, intelligent Mexican-American woman from Port Isabel, Texas, who taught him the beauty of the Mexican culture. Uh, one day while we were driving in his truck, my uncle played the song La Camisa Negra by Juanes, and it completely changed how I perceive Spanish music. Uh, this part's kind of embarrassing, but up until then, I honestly had no idea that there were other genres of Spanish music besides mariachi. I vividly remember saying to myself in my head, wait, there's more to the music besides mariachi? I was amazed at how the Latin sounds and the rock genre just blended so smoothly. And from that moment on, I was determined to discover more. So. I excelled in my Spanish classes and listened to songs to help with my pronunciation. I became obsessed with artists such as Romeo Santos, Shakira, Maluma, and my all-time favorite, Selena Quintanilla. There are countless nights that I stayed out watching YouTube tutorials on how to dance bachata, cumbia, etc. And I cherished every new fact that I learned and was eager to know more. Though unfortunately, my love for the Hispanic culture kind of came to a small halt when I entered high school. Um, up until that point, I felt very unique uh, for being the only brown girl in my middle school. 
I was proud that I could sing all of Selena's Como La Flor and roll my R's. Though the first day of my freshman year, I quickly realized that neither of those skill, skills held value in that environment. The Latino students at my high school surrounded themselves with people like them. Um, and <laughs> they surrounded uh, themselves with people like them, children of immigrant parents and fluent in Spanish. Uh, that's when my feelings of being Hispanic enough, not being Hispanic enough began. Uh, there was a time during my sophomore year where I became friends with a Bolivian girl at my school. And during the winter season, she invited me to go to her family's posada. And if you don't know what that is, uh, Las Posadas is a religious celebration honoring the birth of baby Jesus. Anyways, I was invited to her posada and I remember having a casual small talk conversation with her older sister. And she asked me, uh, does your family do posadas? And um, at first I kind of hesitated because I was like, do I give her the whole adoption spiel or just say no? Well, what she said next is something that will always resonate with me. Uh, for now, enjoy this song by uh, Juan Luis Guerra featuring Juanes. Hola vaqueros, once again, I'm DJ Almex uh, with the show Somos Suficientes. <laughs> uh, before we cut to the music break, uh, we were talking a bit about my backstory and kind of how that relates to the show overall. And I had mentioned that um, in high school, I was friends with this Bolivian girl, and I went to one of her family's posadas. And her sister asked me uh, if my family did posadas. And once again, it's kind of like, oh, do I give her the whole adoption spiel or just simply say no? Um, uh, I said something along the lines of, um, oh, just no. I was adopted and raised by white people. But uh, what she said next was, is something that I'll never forget. Uh, she goes, oh, so you aren't really Mexican. And I must have made a look on my face uh, because she proceeded to apologize, but uh, still it kind of hurt. Uh, just situations like that made it hard for me to even want to try speaking Spanish in front of the Hispanic kids at my school. Like I said, they kind of stuck to themselves. So it was difficult for me to be vulnerable in front of them because if they laughed at me, it wouldn't be the same as them, like, let's say I tripped and fell in front of them. Uh, no, <laughs> if they laughed at me for how I spoke Spanish, it's like they would be poking at my struggle with my identity. So oftentimes I chose to try, not to try, rather than to try and fail. Uh, towards the end of my high school years, though, I started to get out of that feel fearful mindset and chose to apply to a college halfway across the country in order to get closer to my roots. Fast forward several months, and here I am at UTRGV. Upon moving here, however, I was shocked to find that many students attending our school related to those feelings of not being Hispanic enough. It made me start to wonder well, what does it mean to be Hispanic? Do you have to be born outside of the United States? Do you have to speak Spanish perfectly? Do you have to be a certain shade of tan? There seems to be this unspoken division within the Hispanic community where we strive to be the most Hispanic and anyone who fails to meet the unspoken criteria is viewed as less than. Why do we compete instead of building each other up. In this show, I want to discuss topics like these topics that most people are afraid to talk about. These are feelings that I believe a lot of UTRGV students relate to, yet there has never been an outlet for those like us until now. My goal is to bring the Hispanic community together 
and remind other Hispanic students, que si somos suficientes, we are enough. Whether you know ni una palabra de español, or you could translate the entire Declaration of Independence word for word, uh, it doesn't matter. You should be proud of your roots and feel like you are enough to say, soy hispano or soy hispana. Um, but for now, uh, I'll let you guys <laughs> ponder on what you think it means to be Hispanic. Um, uh, for now, uh, enjoy these songs by Selena Quintanilla. All right, vaqueros, you just heard Amor Prohibido by La Reina herself, Selena Quintanilla. Uh, what I really like about Selena is that, uh, you know, although she is most uh, famous for singing songs in Spanish, uh, Spanish actually wasn't her first language. Uh, there's a scene in the movie about Selena that I really like where um, she goes to Mexico and she's getting interviewed by the Mexican press. And at first, her dad and um, this other dude that's just kind of there, uh, they're worried because it's like, oh, I'm what are we going to do? They're going to ask her questions in Spanish. Um, how is she going to respond if, you know, she's not the most proficient in the language? But she surprised everyone and did really well with this interview. Uh, what she did is uh, before the interview started, she went up to each individual person, uh, each interviewer, and greeted them. And because of that, uh, she's kind of recognized as uh, the people's person, you know? And so during her interview, uh, one of the uh, interviewers asked her, uh, Selena, like, how do you feel about being in Mexico for the first time? And uh, she goes, Me siento muy, me siento muy excited and I just found that scene to be really cute and funny and relatable because um, like I had mentioned in my backstory Spanish isn't my first language it's something I'm still working on um, if people ask me like oh well what languages are you fluent in obviously obviously English and then I guess I could say Spanglish if that counts you know not quite fluent in Spanish, but enough to throw some Spanish words in my conversation here and there. Um, but anyways, I just think that Selena is someone who really, uh, like her morals relate to the show Somos Suficientes. Um, and the fact that she's not, um, she's not like insecure or worried about her identity. Uh, she's, uh, she's confident in who she is. There's a quote that I really like by her. Let me see. Is um, when she says, I feel very proud to be Mexican. I didn't have the opportunity to learn Spanish when I was a girl, but it's never too late to get in touch with your roots. Isn't that just perfect? She basically summed up what I was trying to say about Somos Suficientes without all the backstory stuff. Um, another quote I like by Selena is, All I need to do is try and do the best that I can do. And of course this can apply to many aspects of life. But I really like this quote for our show because for those of us who don't feel Hispanic enough, it's hard to get out into the world and say, Hey, I'm Hispanic or Hey, I'm Latino. And be expected to know everything regarding the culture. Uh, in regards to speaking Spanish, I mentioned how I've been laughed at for trying to speak the language. Even the other day, I was at my aunt and uncle's house when my birth mom called uh, to check up on me and to provide some context. She doesn't speak any English. So communicating with her takes some time on my end for needing those extra minutes to translate uh, in my head before speaking out loud. It's like a light switch in my brain. I'm either in Spanish mode or I'm not. 
and sometimes my brain just n- does not want to switch to Spanish mode. And that day at my uncle's house was one of those days. Uh, because at the end of the conversation with my birth mom, I hang up the phone and my Theo goes, your Spanish is not good. Just <laughs> flat out. And I'm just there like, wow, gee, thanks, Theo. Uh, but no hate to him. That's just his way, his own way of saying, hey, Sobrina, you need to practice your Spanish a little more. Download Duolingo again. Side note, my Theo loves Duolingo. Uh, the man has a daily streak of well over a year. And that is not an exaggeration. So shout out to Duolingo. Maybe sponsor the show? Question mark. Um, but anyways, I'm getting off topic. Uh, what I'm trying to say is we should listen to Selena and my Theo and not be afraid to try and potentially mess up when speaking Spanish, because like Selena said, we just need to do the best we can do. And you know, that's all that matters. Um, another artist who I think enables a lot of the ideas behind uh, Somos Suficientes is uh, Shakira. Uh, Let's see. I have some information about Shakira. Uh, Well, before doing the research, I knew she was Colombian. And some of her songs, she mentions uh, the city Barranquilla, Colombia, which is her hometown. But while researching her for the show, I found that she is actually indeed half Lebanese from her father's side, hence the belly dancing. Uh, the album that really jump started her career is called Pies Descalzos, Descalzos, sorry, uh, which produced uh, several hits, including Estoy Aquí, Pienso en Ti, and Un Poco de Amor. In 1998, Shakira released. Donde están los ladros? Ladros. Oh my goodness, my Spanish is not in Spanish brain mode today. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Which, uh, anyways, included several memorials, mem- ooh, memorable singles. Uh, she notably won Latin Grammy Awards for Best Female Pop Vocal Performance and for Best Rock Vocal Performance. After that, she started focusing on establishing herself in the American market. In 2001, she released her first English language album, Laundry Service, which sold more than 13 million copies worldwide. In 2006, her iconic song, Hips Don't Lie, topped charts around the world. And I couldn't find any websites that backed up this um, next topic, but the other day I was talking to my roommates, Ella and Angela, Shout out to you guys. And we were discussing possible artists I could talk about on the show. And when Angela brought up Shakira, um, Ella mentioned that in the beginnings of her career, Shakira was bashed for her accent. Uh, She said that producers wouldn't hire her because of it. And like I said, I'm not entirely sure if this is true or not. I couldn't find any websites on it, but let's say it is. How embarrassing must it be for those producers who originally rejected her and are now seeing how successful Shakira has become since then? I have so much respect for Shakira because she could have forced herself to adopt an American accent, but she didn't. She stuck to her roots, and look how well that turned out. Um, the next person I'd like to talk about who is not a musical artist, but she still contributes lots to the Hispanic community. This actress is a cancer survivor, has won many awards, including the 2017 People's Choice Award for Favorite Comedic Actress, and is most notably recognized for her role in the sitcom Modern Family. If you are thinking of Sofia Vergara, you would be correct. Uh, Similarly to Shakira, Vergara was also born in Barranquilla, Colombia, and is unashamed to speak in her native accent. But what stood out to me about Sofia Vergara was uh, this one quote that I found online where she said, I am a natural blonde, 
But when I started acting, I would go to auditions and they didn't know where to put me because I was voluptuous and had the accent, but I had blonde hair. It was ignorance. They thought every Latin person looks like Salma Hayek. And unfortunately, this is a mentality that is still very much present in today's society. Uh, there's this idea that all Hispanics are tan and short and have dark hair. But obviously, this is not the case. I wish more people from outside the valley knew about our university. Because the fact is, a majority of us are Hispanic, yet we come in all sorts of different colors and heights. Um, I have two friends that go here that are well over six foot and they're Hispanic. And then I have some, uh, like several other friends that, you know, they're lighter in complexion and they're Hispanic as well. As well. Um, you know, these differences, um, it doesn't matter. They're still Hispanic and should be proud of their roots. Um, that doesn't make them any less Hispanic. So, uh, Next, I'm going to play some songs by Shakira, and I hope you enjoy. All right, vaqueros, you were just listening to Hips Don't Lie by Shakira, uh, la hermosa and talented artist that she is. Um, the next artist that I'd like to talk about is someone up there who's in my top artists of all time. Uh, that would be, drum roll please, no drum roll, Bad Bunny. <laughs> oh, 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 uh, now, when I first started writing my script for this segment of Somos Suficientes, I knew Bad Bunny was proud to be Puerto Rican, but it wasn't until I started doing research on him for the show that I realized how much of an advocate he is, or scratch that, how much of an advocate he has to be for his home country. Uh, when I first started typing this script, I had some basic fun facts about him written down, like, yeah, he was in WrestleMania, and he's starting his acting career, appearing in that new movie, Bullet Train. But then I was like, you know, I'm going to finally watch the El Apagón music video. Uh, because I already knew in, that in his song, El Apagón, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, it's about how great Puerto Rico is, and there's that one line that goes, Ahora todos quieren ser Latino, pero les falta sazón. Basically saying that now everyone wants to be Latino, but they lack rhythm. Um, anyways, I had some general knowledge about the song, and I had seen a TikTok where the caption said, uh, white people watching the El Apagón music video, and then overlapping it is that audio from Euphoria, where Maddie is like, wait, is this effing play about us? So I finally decided to watch it for myself, all 22 minutes, uh, just to see exactly what Bad Bunny was trying to portray. And man, you guys, the video almost had me in tears. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, I highly encourage you to go watch it as soon as you can because you will learn a lot. Uh, if you didn't know, right now, right now there are a lot of socioeconomic injustices happening to the people of Puerto Rico. I don't want to get too deep into it because of the politics and everything, but just to summarize a bit of the video, after the song ends, the scene cuts to four Puerto Ricans having a conversation about what's going on in the country. And it seems like a big issue that's happening is the government is catering to the rich people moving to the country and neglecting the native Puerto Ricanos that have been there for decades. Uh, something that stood out to me is when one man being interviewed basically said, it's like being a foreigner in our own land. And again, I don't want to get too deep into the political aspects of things, but at the same time, we have to remember that those are real people living there, a real community with a real culture, and it's sad to see that that could be stripped away for, what, tourism? Uh, 
Maybe if I get approval, we can have a Bad Bunny slash Puerto Rican segment where we highlight some of Benito's accomplishments and bring to light what all is happening in the country. Uh, but, because honestly, before watching the video, I didn't know what was going on. And I guess that's my bad for primarily focusing on Mexican culture since I myself am Mexican. But, hey, like I said before, that's one of the main ideas behind Somos Suficientes. It's a show for everyone, no matter their race or ethnicity, to grow in their knowledge of Hispanic slash Latino culture. So props to Bad Bunny for being proud of his roots and taking the time to use his platform to bring awareness to what's going on in Puerto Rico. Uh, a topic that I briefly wanted to touch on uh, was related to those lyrics that I had mentioned earlier, Ahora todos quieren ser Latino, pero les falta sazón, which in my opinion is true. Uh, I remember at my high school during my freshman year, uh, someone told one of the Latinas in my PE class to go back to where she came from. But now it seems like things that are a part of our culture are now trending. Uh, for example, I don't know if you guys are on TikTok, but all over the app I've seen videos where apparently aguas frescas are now called spa water. Or um, another big topic that I've seen uh, Latinas mad about specifically is a video Hailey Bieber recently made where she supposedly invented this new makeup look where she lines her lips with a brown lip liner and fills it in with lip gloss, AKA something Latinas have been doing for decades. Uh, I read some of the comments of Hailey Bieber's video, and one says, OMG, queen, you inspired my tia to do this in the 90s. Hashtag Latina slay. And, you know, this is no hate to Hailey Bieber, white people. That's definitely not what I want Somos Suficientes to be about. Heck, like I mentioned earlier, I grew up in a white household. Shout out to my mom and dad. <laughs> it's just sad that some of those who aren't Hispanic are taking things that have been a part of the culture for many years and claiming it to be new or theirs. And don't get me wrong, I wish everyone all over the world were knowledgeable about Hispanic culture. It's just a bit frustrating, you know, when credit isn't given where it's due, you know? And apparently I'm not the only one who thinks this way since Bad Bunny had to address it in his music. Uh, here's a final song by no other than Benito himself. Enjoy. All right, vaqueros, you just heard two songs featuring Bad Bunny. And I hate to say it, but that's it for the first segment of Somos Suficientes. Uh, muchísimas gracias for tuning in. And I hope you en uh, join me once again uh, next Tuesday from 4.30 to 5.30 Central Time. Y recuerden, be proud of your roots and never forget que si somos suficientes. I'm DJ Almex and I'll see you next time. What do I do next? Do I hit record? Do I hit record?